Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you two results. I want to show you how we can differentiate y equals the inverse sine of x over a, a being a constant, and also to show you a particular standard integral that is a result of differentiating this. Now you might see this written, by the way, as arc sine of x over a. Now to differentiate this, there's two methods that we can use. Both require us at least taking the sine of both sides. So if we do that, we're therefore going to have the sine of y equals x divided by a. Now I could go from here and times both sides by a and make x the subject. So that's one way, I'll just put here or we would make x the subject and say x equals a times the sine of y. Now if I differentiate this with respect to y, we therefore got dx by dy equals the constant a multiplied by the differential sine y, which is cosine y, or cos y there. Now we'll return back to this later on, but the other way that we could differentiate this is by implicit differentiation. We could differentiate this with respect to x. So if I was to say therefore if we differentiate for short diff with respect to x, then differentiating sine y with respect to x, remember we differentiate it with respect to y, which would therefore be the cosine of y, but we have to then multiply it with dy by dx. Okay, implicit differentiation there. And if we differentiate x over a with respect to x, it's just going to be 1 over a. Now both these methods, you'll notice we have got cosine of y in it. And we need to change that to a function of x. And the way we do this is to remember the identity that the cosine squared of any angle, let's say y, plus the sine squared of the same angle, y, is identical to 1. And so if I rearrange this and make cosine y the subject, then we've therefore got the cosine of y would be equal to the square root then of 1 minus sine squared y. And we know what sine of y is, it's x divided by a. So I can say that this is equal to the square root then of 1 minus x over a all squared. In other words, x squared divided by a squared. And if I put this all over one common denominator, then we've got the square root of a squared minus x squared all over a squared. And I can take the square root of the bottom here, but just leave the top as the square root of a squared minus x squared. And the square root of a squared there will just be a. So I'll just border this off. This is an important result then that we're going to use now. Okay, so just border that round. And in place of cosine y, say in this one, I'm just going to write the root of a squared minus x squared over a. So therefore what we've got here is the root of a squared minus x squared, all divided by a, times dy by dx is going to equal 1 over a. And for this result here, I've therefore got dx by dy equals a times cosine of y, which will be the square root then of a squared minus x squared, and that's all divided by a. And can you see that in each of these examples, the a's cancel. If I multiply both sides here by a, 
that will cancel with that one. And in this one, this A will cancel with that A there. Now you should be familiar with the result, I'll just put it here, the result that dy by dx is equal to 1 divided by dx by dy. And if that's the case, all I've got to do is invert this. dy by dx would be equal to, let's just put it down here, dy by dx would be equal to 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared. And you'd get exactly the same result from here if you just divided now both sides by the root of a squared minus x squared. dy dx would equal 1 over a, the root of a squared minus x squared. So basically then, just to recap, if we've got y equals the inverse sign then of x divided by a constant a, it follows that dy by dx then is equal to 1 over the root of a squared minus x squared. So let's just border that off as a result that you should try and remember. Although generally the formula book will have this result. Okay. It's worth noting that if a, the constant a, was 1, then y equals the inverse sine of x would give us that dy dx is equal to just simply 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, the direct spin-off of this is that it follows that if we were to integrate 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared with respect to x, Okay, so we just put dx there. Integrating with respect to x, what would the result be? Well, it's got to be basically the inverse of this. It's got to be the inverse sine of x divided by a plus a constant of integration plus c. So it's well worth then remembering this result. And again, you'll generally find this in your formula book. OK, although it might just give you the result when a is equal to 1. So the integral of 1 all divided by 1 minus x squared with respect to x would be equal to the inverse sine of x plus a constant c. OK, so I hope that's given you some idea on how we can differentiate y equals the inverse sine of x over a or the arc sine of x over a the result that we get and also the result we get when we integrate 1 over the root of a squared minus x squared with respect to x.